the atmosphere tightens like a coiled spring as I tread cautiously toward Wesley Nathaniel, a man ensnared in a harrowing battle for control over his own body. Every step I take echoes with the weight of uncertainty, the air thickening with tension as if it were a palpable force. Wesley, a visage of visible torment, grapples with the inner turmoil that has him in its clutches. His every movement is a testament to the struggle, a dance with agony that plays out in the contortion of his features. His blue eyes, windows to a storm of pain and desperation, meet mine, pleading for understanding amid the chaos. In that charged moment, the connection between us is an unspoken acknowledgement of the dire circumstances, a shared understanding of the impending storm that threatens to engulf us both. I can't hold on much longer, Overkill. I am concerned, and I step closer to Wesley. I am desperate for answers, but also concerned for the person who now stands before me. Who is Clara Wesley? Why is Cyphus so obsessed with her? Clara? I don't know a person by that name. Only a project. I press for more information, determined. What does Clara stand for then? Wesley, wincing in pain, reluctantly responds. Crudo locks altered reality anomaly. In a desperate plea for stability, Wesley's fingers close around my arm, his grip a frantic anchor, as if my presence is the only lifeline keeping him from being swept away by the tumult within. His eyes lock onto mine, an urgent plea etched in their depths, silently imploring for salvation from the tempest raging within him. You need to stop no sin at all costs. You're the, the only one who can. I'm conflicted. I need Wesley. I need to know everything he knows. I need him as a witness. I have to urge him to come with me. Insistent. Come with me, Wesley. We can find a way to break Cyphus's hold on you. Wesley, with tears in his eyes, shakes his head. No overkill. I'm beyond hope. Too far gone under Cyphus's control. The next time we meet, it won't be me. It will be nothing. Frustrated, I press for answers. What does Nelson want? Why is he doing all this? Wesley, grunting in pain, reveals the sinister truth. Control. He wants complete control. Control is everything. Control is power. But complete power is dominion. Panic fills those once vibrant blue eyes. It's a panic that transcends the immediate fear, one that mirrors the struggle of a drowning man, desperately grasping for a lifeline. I've witnessed such panic only once before, the panic of a man on the brink of death, desperately clinging to life and hope. In the depths of Wesley's eyes, a fleeting moment of despair reveals itself, an image of a man caught in the throes of inevitable fate. As if gasping for a final breath, his eyes reflect the turmoil within, a silent plea for salvation. Yet, in that desperate struggle, there's a subtle shift. A tinge of red starts to reclaim those eyes, a stark reminder that Wesley is losing the fight against the relentless forces that bind him. The panic persists, an unspoken cry for help, as the battle within Wesley intensifies and the grip of darkness tightens its hold on his fading essence. The missing people? Wesley! What happened to them? Wesley answers with tears streaming down his face, delivers a heartbreaking truth. They're gone. The only thing that remains is Project Clara. Run overkill. Never return. There are no more answers here. I pivot swiftly, spurred by an urgent need to flee the unfolding chaos. The abrupt awareness of the missing people lands like a gut punch, leaving me momentarily reeling. My mind races to process the staggering reality, while my feet, seemingly guided by their own volition, propel me away from the haunting scene within the warehouse. 
I barely hear Wesley Nathaniel's final words. Zero, one, three, overkill. Zero, one, three, 